Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do something very very special from the southwest of England, from Cornwall in fact. I'm going to make a corn-ish pasty. So I say corn-ish with a big old hyphen in the middle because it's like a Cornish pasty but uh, well if I was trying to sell this I wouldn't be allowed to call it that because I'm not in Cornwall. It's a protected name. It's got to be made in the county of Cornwall to the recipe laid down by the Cornish Pasty Association. So there you go. And I'm doing this pasty. It was requested by Ian Brooke recently. Uh, I did it six years ago, in fact, and it was a pretty ropey effort. So it's definitely worth a second look and uh, hopefully it'll turn out brilliantly. We'll start with the pastry. It's a short crust pastry, although the specification does also allow rough puff or uh, flaky pastry, which as you all know, I'm not a huge fan of. So short crust it is. I've got 500 grams of strong white bread flour. You can do it with ordinary flour, but the extra gluten in the strong flour makes it more strong. 125 grams each of lard and butter, cut into small chunks, a teaspoon of salt, and 175 ml of cold water. Let's chuck the salt in first and pop it in the mixing bowl. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can do it by hand by rubbing in the fat with your fingertips. I'll just pop all of the fat in there. So let it chug away till all the fat is incorporated with the flour and it should look like a, a coarse sand. And then you can start adding the water quite slowly uh, until it comes together in a bowl. Well, a cohesive lump and we'll wrap this in good old plastic film and stick it in the fridge to rest for three hours. Yep, that's right, three hours. So I'll come back later. So hopefully we're going to make uh, six pasties and for the filling you need 400 grams of beef skirt, 300 grams of potato, 150 grams of swede and 150 grams of onion. I think I'll need, well I need to weigh that, that won't be 150 grams I don't think. I could just check. Yeah, it's 120, so I'll need a bit of another one. And salt and pepper in the ratio, two parts salt to one part pepper. And the specification doesn't specify what kind of pepper, so I'm, I'm using ground white pepper, because I like it. The beef skirt, you want to get rid of any fat or gristle, and then cut it into small slices. Remember, you know, this, this gets cooked in the pasty from raw so you don't want great big chunks that will take forever so kind of little bits like that now we just need to talk about this horrible little vegetable this is a swede it's pinky purpley skin and uh, slightly orange flesh except in Cornwall they call it a turnip and I think also in uh, Scotland they'd call it a turnip or even a neep and in North America they call it a rutabaga uh, whatever you call it I really don't like the flavor of these things but you know I'm being traditional so we've got to do it so you need to peel all your vegetables and then the specification says you can slice them or dice them but uh, one of the things about having done the recipe before and I've got a lot of comments many of which are quite brutal, several of which completely contradict each other, uh, you know, and it, it gets down to the level of my grandmother did it like that, and somebody else says my grandma did it like that, and it's like, you know, pistols at dawn. So I'm told that slicing them is better than dicing them. And I can understand that because again, it's, uh, it's how quickly will they cook. I've chopped all the veggies and now it's time to put the pasties together. So we need to roll out the dough and you'll need something to cut discs with or around. So you want something that's 20 centimetres diameter and this bowl actually is perfect. Uh, so that's about 8 inches because I can use that sharpish rim as a cutter. Otherwise you'll be down to like a side plate and cutting around it with a knife. So flour on the worktop. Here's our nicely rested dough from this morning. So I'll take about half of that, roll it out and uh, we should get three discs out of this chunk. Three is a bit optimistic. I'll get two out of this for sure. Mm. 
Right, I was a bit optimistic about getting six out of it as well. I've got five and just this bit of pastry left over which isn't enough to do anything. So yeah, these might be a bit thick, but never mind, they'll be wonderful. <laughs> so spread them out and then you need to put the filling in and you do it in layers and it goes potato, swede, onion and meat um, and between each layer plenty of seasoning and on the top plenty of butter. Right here we go, potato So we only put the filling in the bottom half uh, so that the lid can fold over and also I've left the rim clear because that'll be where we do the crimping. So seasoning and then the swede. Yum. More seasoning. Uh, right, onion. And more seasoning. And now the meat. And now a generous amount of butter on top of the meat. And just moisten the edge with water and fold it in half. <laughs> and this is where I um, realised that because I've got only five and not six, uh, I should have only used 80% uh, of the <laughs> filling that I prepped. Okay, uh, well that's just about closed. We'll come back to crimp that a bit later on. So I'm going to pop these in the fridge to chill for half an hour before we do the final crimping. Now I'm going to make up some egg yolk glaze for the pasties, so I need to separate two eggs. So just using the, the yolks with a bit of water gives you a really high gloss finish that's uh, quite smart. Right, now I'm not an expert at uh, crimping pasties by any means. And basically what you do, put your finger in that indentation, pull up some pastry over, and then move your finger along, pull, press down, pull, press down, etc. And an interesting bit of trivia a pasty crimped by a left-hander, that's me, is known as a cock pasty and one done by a right-hander is a hen pasty. Yes. <laughs> so that um, doesn't look much like your traditional Cornish pasty rope effect, but um, it's what I've done. So, um, and just bang some holes in it with a fork to let the steam out. Now you want your oven heating to 165 Celsius if it's a fan oven, convection oven. That's 185 for a normal one, and that's gas 5. And now we need to glaze our pasties with the uh, egg yolk and water mix. Just get, get the glaze as thin as you can so it doesn't kind of pool in the crevices. <laughs> and I've got it on a sheet of greaseproof paper on a... Uh, baking sheets and there's flour on the paper as well just so things don't stick. And now that goes in the oven for 50 to 55 minutes and I'll turn it around halfway through. Right while those are baking I'll do some shout outs. Uh, one to Aya and Varg the dog <laughs> uh, for a PayPal donation recently thank you and also to Stefan Kempkes for another PayPal donation. Much appreciated guys, thank you. And I think I should mention about the uh, crimping, there is a small amount of controversy uh, about how you should crimp it. The specification says it should be on the side like a, a capital letter D, but other people insist that it should be crimped across the top like a stegosaurus. Uh, so generally the, the top crimp is Devon, the side crimp is Cornwall. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Well, I think they look pretty good. So I'll just transfer them to wire rack. 
Let them cool down for 10 minutes. You're making my kind of noises. Let them cool down for 10 minutes Come before we can do the taste test. They're huge! <laughs> well, yeah. They're probably very wise, but they're extremely hot. Oh, look at all the little pleats round the edges. And a glossy brown finish. <laughs> it was a bit clever then. You. Apart from the uh, oven glove thing. Oh yeah. I'll see. Yeah, I'll hold this. You do that. Shiny, shiny. God. They're monsters, aren't they? No, they're normal size. <laughs> Oops. There we go. There we go. Right. See, I cooked. <laughs> My beautiful assistant. Thank you. So, um, right, come back in ten minutes. Okay. So the thing about Cornish pasty is it's... Um... Yes? Oh, hello. <laughs> it's taste test time with Mrs. <laughs> Keith Brooks. He was extremely hungry. Okay, it's in there. So what's the thing so about Cornish pasties? Well, the thing is, it's not like uh, a sit-down meal on a plate with uh, knife and fork and that. Uh, you get it from your baker's, not Greg's, uh, in a paper bag and you eat it from there. Oh yeah. And it's a good thing in winter, crinkle, crinkle, rattle, 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 because it's nice and warm. Best eaten with mittens, man. Mm. <laughs> So are you going for brown sauce or pickle lily? Mm. I haven't decided yet. Oh. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, nice and soft. Mm. I'm looking for that um, that turnip or swede or whatever it is, because honestly, I saw this thing on the sideboard and it's like, what is that? It's in the fridge. Yeah, I like root vegetables, but there are nice. limits. So did you put it in or not? Yeah. Yeah. And it's fine. <laughs> That's what I was working up to. <laughs> just eat, no, you haven't got the filling yet. Mmm. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Possibly a little bit salty for my taste. Oh well, well I mean, yeah, it is heavily seasoned. This is good. This is good. I like that. Um, yeah. The do. I've I've seen um, another sort of way of doing pasties, which is more like you know uh, a diplodocus. Basically, it's got its ridge going straight over the back. But I always think of those as cold ones. You know, they usually are made of the thick pastry and. And all of that. Oh, well, but no. This this is the sort of pasty that you'd have as a snack for eating. In Cornwall. Mm. Um, no, the uh, the dinosaur one is uh, definitely. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Except for <laughs> some of you made a comment on on my last attempt, where he insisted that his Cornish grandma did it Diplodocus style, and that was the only way it could be done. <sighs> That's how you start wars. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Do you think they're fed up of watching us yeah, pass these yet? <laughs> I'm not putting it down. <laughs> I'm hungry and it's good. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you next time. Well, yeah. <laughs> no.